where some groups are fighting a new set of rules they say discriminate against them and expands the power of the IRS. National correspondent Christine Frazau explains. These days, it's becoming more difficult to follow the money that flows in and out of Washington. Ever since the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision four years ago, we've seen a surge of activity by politically active nonprofits. Activity like television ads. This one, put out by the group Ending Spending, targets New Hampshire Senator Jean Shaheen. If you like your senator, you can keep her. If you don't, you know what to do. 501c4 or social welfare groups like this raise millions of dollars but never have to say where the money came from. Michael Beckel is with the Center for Public Integrity. When you've got dark money in box, there's a question of who's funding these groups and what are they getting for their secret investments. That question is one reason why the IRS is considering new rules in which social welfare groups would lose their tax-exempt status if they engage in, quote, candidate-related political activity. It's a serious infringement on free speech. Digital Liberty Executive Director Katie McAuliffe says she'd be forced to remove research from her website, which connects specific candidates to legislation. Informing voters about what their elected officials are doing is a social welfare function. More than 50 organizations have signed a petition opposing the rules, which they say give the IRS a license to kill groups which oppose the Obama agenda while exempting unions from those rules. But Lisa Rosenberg with the Sunlight Foundation says the rules would simply provide clarity, shedding light on what is and isn't election-related activity. The messenger is, is, is as important as, as the message, and I think we really, as voters, deserve to know who, who the messenger is. Those proposed changes have touched off a firestorm of praise and criticism alike, though it would be a long time before they were adopted, if ever at all. Experts say they wouldn't go into effect before the 2014 elections and possibly not even before 2016. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. 20 years ago, 